Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. I'm Aurora Lung from Danville, California. In my previous videos, I installed the Big Tree Tech E3 RRF and enabled the Wi Fi feature for the Sovel SV01. Today, I will install the IDEX expansion board. This board has two TMC2209 stepper drivers. It is supposed to be used to control another extruder and an x-axis stepper motor, so you can get two independent extruders. Let's take a look at this tiny expansion board. We have two TMC2209 stepper drivers without a heatsink. That's okay if I use it to control the second z-axis, as it won't move quickly and the chip won't be hot. But what if we use them to control another x-axis and extruder? I think that Big Tree Tech could include two pieces of heatsink, but it's not a big deal. You can easily get a pack of 30 on Amazon for a few dollars. We also have two connectors for stepper motors, a PT100 and a standard thermistor connector. When you print at a high temperature, you may need a higher quality PT100 thermistor, which should be good for up to 500 degrees. A filament sensor and end stop connectors for the second extruder. We also have a power output here, which is always on, and two other power outputs here, which are connected to fan 0 and fan 1 on the mainboard. You can move the case fan connector to one of these, but I will just leave it as I connected the case fan to the power supply directly and let it stay on. We also have a heat cartridge connector and a power connector to connect to the main power supply to power up this board. We have a spare expansion connector with an IO pin, ground, and one 5 volt power. You can basically use it for an additional sensor. You just need to update the firmware to enable it. The two jumpers are for sensorless homing. Since we are using this for the second z-axis, we don't need to use these. This expansion board uses a FFC ribbon cable to connect to the main board. The connector is very small and it locks onto the cable like this. When I make Arduino projects, I prefer to use another type of connector. I think this one locks on the cable a little better. Let's open up the printer base and install this board. Since there's no space to mount the expansion board, I moved the case fan up and left some room for it. I will make a simple plate in Fusion 360 to mount this board. The good thing is that Big Tree Tech also includes the dimensions of this board in the manual, so I didn't have to measure it. I will upload this file on Thingiverse. Before I mount the board, I would like to connect the power cable. It came with a cable with bare wire, so I will put ferrules on. Connect one end to the power supply. Connect red to the positive and black to the negative. Make sure they are secure. Then, remove the main board and connect the ribbon cable at the back. Make sure to secure the cable with this little lever. I will now connect the other end of the power cable to the IDEX board. Next, mount the main board, the 3D printed plate, and the expansion board. Move the second Z stepper motor from the main board to the E1M connector on the expansion board. The hardware installation is done. Let's make some changes in Marlin. Use VS Code to open the mainboard firmware folder. We need to edit the mainboard pin file to enable this board. Go to the Marlin subfolder, Source, Pins, select the chip of this board, which is the STM32F4, and under this folder, you can see the pins BTTE3RF.H. Open this file, scroll down a few lines, and you will see Define BTTE3RF IDEX board. 
Enable this line and everything on this board will be enabled. Save the file. Let's move on to configuration.h. Search for define Z2 driver type. We need to enable this line and set it to TMC2209 as we want to enable the stepper driver to control the second Z axis instead of an extruder. That's all we need to change in this file. Save it and let's move on to configuration ADV.h. Search for define num z stepper drivers. Instead of one, set this to two. Since we were actually using one stepper to connect with two motors before, for now we will connect each motor to an independent stepper driver. Search for define z stepper auto align and enable this line. Scroll down a little bit and we can change some parameters of auto Z align. G34 max grade means it can handle the maximum incline. Since we are using a BL touch to probe the bed, the maximum incline it can handle is limited by the pin length of the BL touch. Let's leave it at 5% of the total Z height, as it's more than what the BL touch is capable of doing. Z stepper align iterations means it will see how many rounds it takes to align the motors. In most cases, five rounds should be okay. Z stepper align ACC is the accuracy we want to achieve. Since most lead screws and stepper motors of budget 3D printers can't move less than 0.01 millimeters, the best we can do is set it to 0.01. Search for define Z2 current. You can see by default, the X, Y, and Z stepper driver's currents are set to 580. We want the second Z driver to be the same current, so let's change it to 580. For now, each stepper driver is driving only one motor. 580 should be enough. If you set it too high, the motor will get hot. If you set it too low, it may not provide enough power to move the motor. That's all we need to change. Let's save all files. Click on the alien head icon, select BTT E3 RRF from project tasks, and click build. After a while, the terminal will show the success message. Go back to the Marlin folder, dot PIO, build, and big tree e 3 rf Copy the firmware.bin file to the root of the SD card and turn on the printer. After the firmware is uploaded, check your Z offset and sensorless homing sensitivity values. If they have been changed after the new firmware is uploaded, you need to set it back to the correct value. I will now put some pressure on one side of the gantry. As you can see, the right is higher than the left. We will try to use this Auto Z Align feature. Select Motion and Auto Z Align from the LCD screen. Now the first iteration is done. It shows there is still a 2mm difference between the two Z axes. Before the first iteration, it could be even more. That's quite a lot as we are printing a 0.2 layer height. Your print can't look too nice if there's so much difference between the two Z axes. After the second round, there's still about a 1mm difference. It took three rounds to achieve our target accuracy, which is 0.01mm. The result is pretty good. We should put this in our starting G-code to let the printer align Z before auto bed leveling. Open this existing G-code file. I will change G28 to G34, as when you do G34, it will automatically do G28. After that, we can do G29 for auto bed leveling. You can do the same to update the starting G-code of your slicer so all new G-code files will be updated with the new commands. Let's print something to make sure everything is working. The bed and nozzle are heating. It will now align the gantry 
followed by auto bed leveling, and then it will start printing. After this $10 IDEX expansion board upgrade, the Silval SV01 has the Auto Z Align feature that many more expensive printers don't have. This could definitely improve the print quality and make it an even better printer. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.